Hey guys, it's JM. I'm setting up a new system to plot and I thought it would be fun to walk people through my whole process of getting a brand new system set up. So this is a Lenovo P620. Uh, if you look, it has a uh, AMD Threadripper Pro 5945WX, it's a 12 core. Uh, this has 256 gigabytes of RAM, it has eight sticks of DDR4-3200 and it has uh, a 3090 so this will be extremely fast this is about 100 terabytes per day plotting power with the latest blade bakuda so the first thing i'm actually going to do is set up my monitoring scripts so that we can monitor the entire process while we're plotting so uh, if you go i again i'm not a developer but i did have some uh, some help with chat gpt and putting these scripts along the way and they are a lot of these are battle tested by me so um and these are my collection of scripts for just random stuff. Again, you know, use at your own risk, but I'll show you kind of what I'm using them for. So we're gonna get clone my little repo here and go into my scripts. And we are first going into go to monitoring. And if you look, I have a compose.yaml, which is basically gonna start node exporter Prometheus and Grafana. And then I have a Prometheus.yaml, which is going to start um, Prometheus and Node. Now, this uh, one I have in here has an extra Chi exporter, which uh, we may actually use here later. Um, and obviously, you need to change the IP address here of that if you're going to use it properly. So my IP address on this system is uh, 1.14. So I would change that here. I would nano um, Prometheus.yaml and so this will set up if we want to use chi exporter later when we're farming uh it'll be all ready to go and uh you'll see i'm actually going to use set this up with another uh one that we are going to install and run manually called uh, nvidia exporter and we're going to run that same uh, ip address but 9400 and we do not need the labels on that so I'm going to hit control O and save. So now all we have to do is docker compose up dash D. It's going to create these new volumes because we specified the volumes. This is so that if you turn the docker off and do docker compose down, that your data is going to be persistent across those. And if you wanted to mess with those, you would do docker volume LS, you can see uh, you can have the, the two volumes there that we created to keep the data for Grafana and Prometheus. If we wanted to remove those, we certainly could. So now we're going to go head over to 192.168.1.14 and we're going to do uh, port 3000. This is our brand new Grafana instance, admin, admin. Uh, I'm not going to set a password right now. So we're going to add our first data source. It's going to be Prometheus. We do HTTP. Uh, now, localhost doesn't work when you're doing this in Docker for some reason because of the networking. So just add port 9090, that's uh, for uh, Prometheus. And then we are going to go to dashboards and new import, and we're gonna type in 1860, which is the dashboard for node exporter, load Prometheus. So check here last five minutes. It looks like there's populating some data here. So node exporter is working. So the next thing we're going to do is set up this NVIDIA exporter, which is actually pretty cool. So um, we are just going to basically do three commands. We're going to install the NVIDIA container toolkit. We're going to uh, configure the Docker runtime for NVIDIA container toolkit, and then we're going to restart Docker. Okay. And now after that, we're just going to run this command Docker, Docker run dash D GPUs all. We were, I don't know if you have to use this admin, but I added it in there anyways, uh, and then we'll port 9400. And you'll see this is thing is called uh, NVIDIA exporter. So now if we do Docker PS, you'll see it's running this uh, NVIDIA DCGM, which this is the one that comes directly from NVIDIA, which is why I prefer to use it over some of the other exporters that I've messed around with. Um, now, if you look at the NVIDIA DC, uh, DCGM exporter um, uh, Docker, uh, here on the GitHub, you can see that they do have a Grafana dashboard here. Now, I think there's probably one on the Grafana website as well. 
uh, but this one does uh, was updated three weeks ago. So you know we can use this. And so you could basically just either copy all this or download the raw file. And then when you go into here uh, in Grafana, new import, upload the dashboard JSON. We're gonna uh, import it and voila. And so now I have uh, data for our GPU, which will have temperature, um, GPU power, um, nope, let's see if I can see here. Uh, yeah, GPU to power, power over time, which is gonna be really, really nice when we start plotting GPU util utilization. All this good stuff for our, our GPU exporter. So now, now we have the, our two main dashboards for that we really, really like for plotting, which is Node Exporter and the NVIDIA. And you can make any combination of these two uh, as in, in, into a new dashboard if you want. I made some very basic mount and formatting scripts that are pretty unique to Chia. They are made to format the drives to ext4 for farming use for maximum space and, and capacity utilization. These are not meant to catch every single corner case, but uh, I actually just made a few updates to the scripts to make them a little bit more flexible so real humans can use them besides me, but we're gonna give them a shot. So if I look at LS block here, you can see that we want to format SDB through SDX. These are the drives that are, I just, fresh hard drives, I just put them in there and we, we want to make sure that they get formatted correctly. And we want to do this very quickly because we don't want to waste a bunch of time doing them serially. So what this mount, uh, format script does is basically just looks at all the drives and that in LS block that don't have mount points or any partitions with, partitions with mount points and then it's just going to ask you, do you want to format them? And we're going to format them with ext4. So if we run this, format.sh, it's going to say, do you want to format the drives, sdb through stx? We're going to say yes. Again, this is a very dangerous script. If you have any script ever that is formatting drives with the force command, yeah, you really need to make sure that you're, you're doing the right drives, which is why I added this step in. So. This is the nice thing about the script. If you hit yes here, it's going to go and do this all in the background. So it's not going to need to do them one by one because you know this takes with the large file four, uh, it takes whatever, 10, 15 seconds per drive. So again, this is stupid. You don't want to just waste five minutes or whatever sitting here waiting. You'd want to do them all at once. So this is where you would wait until you see them all done. So we're just gonna wait here for a second and make sure that they all got completed here. So you can see done, 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 done. Uh, this is good. This, this is generally what happens when the script is working correctly. So now you'll have to hit enter eventually. If I do a uh, LS block, oops. And I do a dash option, I want to do name and then UUID. You can see that these are now formatted, right? They have a UUID because they have an ext4 file system. That is good. So now we have this other script called mount. And what mount does is basically uses that same logic to find all the SD uh, slash dev slash SDs in the system that don't have, uh, that are not mounted and we're going to basically create a mount point. And I just made a modification of the script um, to basically add the serial number to the mount point. So we'll see if this works properly. I think that's generally probably a good thing to have. If you find one that's missing, then you can go turn the system off and just know exactly what serial numbers are missing. So uh, we're gonna do this here. So you can see Duff, we don't have any of the hard drives mounted here. If we run this mount.sh, we're gonna enter our username. You have to do this because um, Again, you have to run this command as uh, sudo. Uh, and you can see here, oops, we forgot to run it as sudo. So um, you can run this. Uh, generally, you can run it as root here if you have sudo super user, rather than just running the script as sudo because it's going off and doing a bunch of stuff in the script and you sometimes sudo, just sudo doesn't work, uh, you have to mess around with this. Okay, so oops, we just ran format before. We want to run mount. 
Okay, so here it says the following drives will have FS tab and map points created, SDB through SDX. Do you want to proceed? Yes. All right. So you can see, duff, now uh, all of our drives are mounted. Now, uh, these ones didn't get serial numbers because apparently my, these are SAS drives. My script didn't like the uh, serial format for the SAS drives, so I'll have to mess with that. But uh, as you can see, the other drives, the SATA drives, got their little serial numbers here, um, and they are all formatted. Plotting is pretty straightforward with Blabit CUDA. Right now, we are getting the... Uh, binary for, uh, for the alpha 4.3 off downloads.chia.net slash bladebit. So we're just going to alpha 4.3 bladebit CUDA plotter deb and we're using this uh, alpha 4. Um, now fairly soon bladebit will be out of alpha and you'll be able to get the bladebit CUDA just on the release page for bladebit on the github but today this is where it's at. Uh, the command is extremely straightforward so we have just a screen here called bladebit and we can see here screen dash r blade bit. We're going to come back into blade bit and we're just running blade bit CUDA with n zero compressed seven and we're going to run it to mount SSD. So it's extremely straightforward plotting on this system with the 3090 takes uh, about 80 to 90 seconds, uh, somewhere between there. Um, now we have an extremely fast uh, SSD array, which we're going to save the fun for another video but that is what we're writing this to as a buffer so we're not going to be bottlenecked whatsoever here while we're while we're plotting so i am going to let that run in the background here and we will check on it so we'll check on our plots here you can see uh ls slash mount slash ssd you can see we have four plots and now we're, we're ready to get this thing started if we look at our, our screen blade bit um you can see uh control a escape and you can I can tab up. You can see completed plot one in 88 seconds. So we are ripping control A escape. Oops, control A D. Sorry, uh, we'll get out of the screen. Don't want to escape. Uh, now we will start a screen called plow. And we're going to do Python 3 plow.py. And that's it. Uh, now we're going to be plowing everything from mount SSD to uh, all the hard drives in slash farm. That was it. It automatically finds everything in slash farm. We can run dstat to confirm that we are reading at 1.4 gigabytes a second or so and writing to the disks. Now, if you wanted to run uh, IO stat H time one, um, you can see here, you can see some of these drives, each drive 270 megabytes a second, 240, 260. So one, two, three, four, five. So you can see we're writing full bandwidth to the drives. Uh, and that's it. We're gonna come back here and check on it here in a little bit and check on the dashboards and go through everything. We are checking back after two days of plotting. You can see uh, the 23 drives we're plotting all have about 5.3 TIB on them. So we're gonna check uh, our dashboards. This is where the dashboards get pretty handy. I The only one I make that's custom here is this file system one. I think this is kind of fun to look at for plotting. You can see kind of your plotting velocity over the last day or two days or whatever. Um, so what I have set up here in Grafana is if you look at this, whoops, uh, edit, you can see I'm just using node file system. If you look at the code builder, I have the sum of node file system bytes and I'm, I'm just selecting ext4 file system, so I'm not selecting the temp drives, minus the sum of the file system bytes free. So total amount of size of all the file systems and then minus the free will give me how much is used and I'm doing it for all, some will give it to me for all the drives that are ext4. And then I have just last and range on here. And range is pretty cool because if I go back here to my default view, if I select one hour, I can see we plotted 2.35 terabytes in the last hour. If I select 24 hours, I can see we plotted 56.9 terabytes, which is actually a bit slower than the system should be doing. And uh, just, I'll show you kind of how I figured out what's going on here. Um, and then, you know, over the last two days, you can see it starts out uh, when we start plotting here, you can see we actually plotted about 70 terabytes on the first day. So it, it did slow down a little bit, but you can use this dashboard to kind of help you figure out. You can see that if I go the last seven days, you can see exactly when we started here uh, on 627 at 850. And you can see the kind of the graph, you can see it kind of slows down a little bit the second day. 
Um, now I figured out um, through here, you can kind of look at some of the things and figure out what's going on. So I looked into some of the, in the last two days, kind of what, what change happened. And it does look like the, the drives I have went into a, a, a thermal management state. So uh, they, they basically just acknowledged that they were being uh, right up near the limit to the temperature and you know changed uh, power states. So again, a little bit of slowdown there, but I just kind of figured out what was going on here. So I'll probably tweak that. Um, you can see here, if you go into disk space used, we start here and you can look at the percentages of each of the drives. As we move up, you can see the percentages kind of climb here to right today, which is 26% done. So this is how I would use the dashboard for basically plotting. Again, pretty stable. The idea is that you this is a set it and forget it kind of thing. Uh, if I'm doing a, a plotting of a JBOD like this, I would generally you know, come here and check in every couple of days to make sure it's still going. Um, if you really want it to go fast, you could basically set up one of these nodes that are connected to the JBOD either with a 40 gig link and then have you know other hosts basically connect over 40 gig or 10 gig to the switch and basically plot to this to this uh, host. If you had four systems at 10 gig plotting, then you could potentially have like a couple hundred terabytes a day, right? A hundred terabytes per day about per every 10 gig link. So the other way you could do, if I wanted to speed this up, I could throw a couple of my other plotters on here and saturate the 10 gig on here and fill this up in you know half the time or a quarter of the time but uh in this case i'm just going to let it go because uh i am busy for the next couple days but the other dashboard we want to look at is the uh, nvidia dashboard so you can see here uh, over the last 24 hours um, the average was 225 watts our temperature is 63 degrees um, the average utilization was 70%. So that, again, that would tell me, okay, I'm not using my GPU 100%. There's some, some tuning I could do to get this, this faster. And if we look at the first day, this was over, if we look at the last two days, you can see the average was just a little bit higher, I think. So uh, over the first day, our average was 87%. So you can see we were actually plotting a little bit faster on that first day. So again, I would use this to kind of just look and see what I can optimize, making sure your temperature and power and everything are nice and stable. But um, having these dashboards is super nice. So uh, in the next videos, I can show how we're going to set up the farming on these. But for now, uh, that's that's plotting. Thanks.